Hey guys, MCU Collector here with a new video, and this time we have the Target exclusive Hasbro Marvel Legends series Avengers video game, Game Reverse, Star Boost Armor Iron Man. So again, this is a Target exclusive. I did not get mine at Target, not at Target. I ordered mine from Daming Toys. They are based in Taiwan, so that's how I got mine early. It is still slated for an August 1st release through Target. You still can pre-order it now. I will include a link to Daming Toys if you want to put it in an order now or if you want to put in your pre-order through Target I'll include a link there in the description below as well. Just like all the other Avengers Game Reverse figures we get the same style packaging with the white box, the same kind of mashup um, picture on the side with the various different characters, the Avengers. Um, here on the back of the package we get this large um, image of the Star Bruce Iron Man figure which is pretty cool because you know there isn't the wave information you know taking up space. So that looks really cool. The bio reads Iron Man. Tony Stark developed his cutting edge Iron Man armor and helped found the Avengers to protect the world against catastrophic threats. So I guess a little bit of a decent bio. Uh, but Starburst armor looks pretty cool. Uh, there's been several different versions, obviously comics, Iron Man 3, um, and then there's like some of the other game, like the mobile games, I think there's a Star Boost armor also. Different from this one, we know that um, the Avengers game, they've taken... Um, a lot of inspiration from the comics and whatnot to create their own designs on everything. Um, so this one is no exception. Let's get it open and take a closer look. Okay, and here is the Star Boost Iron Man, Star Boost Armor Iron Man figure out of the package. You know, I never realized how really versatile the Hasbro stand, the flight stand, or whatever stand that came with the Deluxe Black Widow, how versatile it really can be, because you can move uh, that claw and holder, that clasp, clamp, whatever. Um, you can move it in all different directions to really try and get something. I'm trying to think, you know, how do I get Iron Man into that straight horizontal type flying pose um, and then you could just move this thing around in all crazy kinds of directions so that's how I was able to do it so that is pretty cool let me get rid of the stand there is the figure typical things that we see we have those same blast effects that we get over and over again but we get four of them so you can use two for the hands two for the feet as it, you know as he's in a flying pose so that is pretty cool and then of course the um, other additional accessories he comes with fists uh, for both the hands. So that is all he has. Now let's take a closer look. Okay, so here is an up close look at the Iron Man figure, um, and it is pretty cool. The white of the figure is kind of like a pearlescent um, color, so it's not just like a bright white or anything like that. It's got that little shimmer uh, to it, so it looks pretty good. We get some gold paint throughout the torso, a little bit on the arms, uh, not really a whole lot. We get um, this gunmetal color that's you know throughout the legs, the arms, the torso, the face. Um, that looks really good. And then we get a little bit of red paint. We got that red line going there, that red line going there. It almost looks like the Stark Industries um, line, but just kind of, I guess kind of turn around. We get it on the, the leg um, and on the other leg, and it's actually done very nice and clean and straight. So I'm glad those came out looking good. It's very minor, but you know, it's, you know, when you separate the color, it really stands out. Uh, so Hasbro did a good job applying that paint on there. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Um, in terms of the paint throughout, it looks pretty good. I have a little bit of missing paint right there on my torso. So, you know, obviously there's going to be some QC issues. Um, so not too bad. Uh, there's a couple of things about this figure that I like and some things that I don't and something that's just kind of weird. Um, but we'll take a look at that um, here in a second. But just looking at overall of the figure, it does look pretty good. We actually get some paint color on the back of the figure. Not a whole lot, but, you know, we definitely get some. So that is pretty cool. Um, when talking about comparisons, though, we look at the other Game Reverse Iron Man figure. Um, and these are basically going to be the same figure. Now, obviously, there are some differences, but it's really not a lot. The upper torso is going to be different. The shoulder pads are different. And the lower legs are different, as you can see there. The rest of the figure, uh, however, is the exact same. So um, some minor differences, not a whole lot. And then, of course, obviously, the paint scheme. So no, not sure how many different skins there's going to be for Iron Man in the game. 
Um, I don't know if this one's going to play a particular role in the game that's going to be important to the story. You know, who knows how they decided to do this. But it is nice to get a star boost uh, armor because it's been in the comics, it's been in the movies, um, you know, a different game. So now we actually have one to go with it. It's a game reverse figure, unfortunately. Um, I would have loved an MCU um, starburst armor, you know, starburst, star boost armor. Um, I'm thinking of the candy now. I would have loved one for the Iron Man 3 uh, movie, but we only got like two uh, of the armors from that movie, unfortunately. And I'll show those in side-by-sides a little bit later, but uh, there he is. Now let's take out, check out his articulation. Okay, so Iron Man. So there's a couple of tricky things. He can look down a decent amount, but looking up is actually a little bit tough. So it, he can do that. It's just the way the sculpt of this chest armor piece on the back, it kind of gets in the way, which is tough because, you know, if he's going to be up in space, you know, he's going to want to look straight out while trying to fly, and he can't do it as much as I would like. If you try and force it, it, it just pulls the head off quite easily. But um, you can get some, not a lot, not enough in my opinion, but... Um, um, it's there. You get the full rotation, of course. There's some pivot going on in there. Uh, the shoulders are very tough, so that's really, really going to get in the way. So really, you're going to get that shoulder to go up that high. That's that's not a lot. That's not enough. That's a problem um, when trying to do certain things, but that's it. The reason why is because the shoulder pad, you know, normally would, would still hinder, but would give enough leeway and kind of go over that shoulder to be able to do that. But because of this top, this tor top torso piece, um, it just can't because you got this, it's just sculpted the way it's sculpted. You can't, you know, on this one, um, you can work that shoulder pad over the shoulder like so. That's just not a possibility with this figure. So very limited there to get that arm to go up, but you get full rotation. There is an upper bicep swivel here. It gets in, it kind of bumps into that shoulder pad a little bit too, so be mindful of that. You get a double jointed elbow, which gives you more than 90 degrees, so that looks really good. Wrist swivel, and they do hinge, and that is the same on both of them. So you get the peg um, to go with the, uh, the blast effects, and those uh, hinge as well. So that works out. Now the top torso piece, and I forgot to mention this earlier, I can't believe I did that. Um, it's like a hard plastic, hard rubbery piece on top of another torso. It's not gonna be on top of like this upper torso, even though it has a lot of the same sculpt in that in those parts um, there above the ab crunch. It is different, but it's just weird that it's not the hard plastic portion. Not sure what the reasoning behind that is, um, but maybe it was just easier for them to do this um, instead of a whole hard plastic sculpt, it, it's it's a little bit odd, but uh, is what it is. So we'll see how that affects the articulation, which seems to a little bit because as you're crunching down, it seems to catch right on into the ab there. You can force it a little bit more because it's you know it's a little bit softer, but you're not going to get a whole lot. So crunching forward, you get that much. Going back, you get that much. We have a waist swivel on this guy. Legs go out that far apart there he can kick forward that high goes back a little bit as well you got upper thigh cut there double jointed knee which works quite well there is no boot swivel um, but there is a hinged ankle so you can go down a tiny bit you can go up not really because of the way this boot leg piece this lower leg piece is sculpted this part really goes over the foot it is a little bit softer but it's not going to give you a whole lot of leeway getting that foot to hinge up unfortunately and there's ankle pivot but again we're suffering that same issue where this the way this is sculpted it's going to really hinder that so i mean it's there but you know good luck trying to really get full use out of it and then peg holes at the bottom of the feet which we know because we have the blast effects in there so um, articulation definitely more limited than any other Iron Man figure um, so I think this is one of those where the sculpt wins it articulation loses it unfortunately I forgot to mention one of my nitpicks because of the lower leg the way it's sculpted and how it's so much larger um, I think the feet are too small it's the same feet um, as the one in the abomination build a figure wave um, but I think it should have had bigger feet because these leg parts are just so much larger. So that's one of my complaints. I'm um, taking another closer look at this because I don't know why I didn't mention it at that time. So you could see, you know, underneath that torso piece and that this is just like a rubber, a harder rubber, but a rubber um, overlay over whatever 
generic blank torso that they have underneath there. Why that is, I don't know. And then you can see that there's a little bit of a color difference between the hard plastic pearlescent white um, and then this rubbery portion. It comes out looking a little bit darker. So just thought I'd point that out up close. Okay, and we'll get it out of the way now. Here is the Star Boost Armor Iron Man next to the Marvel Legends Stan Lee. Okay, and the two Iron Man figures next to each other, and you can see the sculpt and everything um, is going to be the same in those parts other than the lower legs, the shoulder pads, and that upper torso. Head sculpt is the same. It's just the different color variations to make it look different. One thing that I noticed just now as I push these down, so mine come a little bit loose. So you got the lower leg portions um, a little loose there. The same with the Star Boost figure, but this one's actually a lot more so compared. So be aware of that. Okay, now the Star Boost Armor Iron Man next to the Captain America and the Ms. Marvel from this, uh, the Game Reverse Wave, the Abomination Builder figure from the same game. But now that the official newest trailer for the uh, Avengers game has come out, we had a better look at Ms. Marvel and this figure. You know, I was like, oh, you know what? It's the same as the comic one that they released, but, you know, the suit's the same. Well, having a better look at it, there's a lot of other things that Hasbro could have done, They, which really, really should have given us a new sculpt on the Ms. Marvel. So they really dropped the ball and went the cheap route. Um, I, I mean, I get it. It's what they do, it, it, but it definitely sucks because it seems like they, they're going big time into this game reverse. You know, there's a rumored wave too. What, who's going to be in it? We have no idea. What the build a figure is going to be? We have no idea. I'm hoping for Modoc because he's the villain in the game. We shall see. You know, who knows? Uh, but they're putting in a lot of effort. But then the, for the Ms. Marvel, they put in no effort whatsoever. Um, it has one of the best head sculpts that I've seen, the way the paint came out looking and everything. Um, but the rest of the figure is just, you know, a real big letdown. You know, after that, after seeing that trailer, um, it's just, it really is. So that's unfortunate. Okay, and here is the Star Boost Iron Man figure next to the Abomination Builder figure. Um, so they are both going to be in the game. No, no, no telling whether or not um, you can use that skin throughout the entirety of the game or if it's only going to be in certain parts or how that's going to work out. So we don't know if these two will actually share screen time in the game. Um, only time will tell when it releases in September. See, I would love it if they, if Hasbro revisited Iron Man 3 and gave us the full Hall of Armor. Every Iron Man suit there's been, it would be insane. It'd be crazy. You know, Hot Toys is doing it. Hasbro would never. I think everyone would complain. There's too many Iron Man figures. Too many Iron Man figures. No movie figures. Um, I would love it. I'd buy every single one, but, you know, that's just me. Um, but um, Star Boost, it, Star Boost, it would be really cool if we can add to our Hall of Armor for the MCU collection. I, I wish. Because, again, we only had the two Iron Man figures from Iron Man 3, the Mark 27 Disco, um, which was actually in the Target exclusive two-pack with the Civil War, uh, Captain America Civil War War Machine Mark 3. It was labeled as a v Avengers figure concept, but we know that it was the Disco Mark 27 figure from the movie. I don't know why they did it that way. Um, and then this was the 42, I want to say. 43 was Avengers Age of Ultron, right? Um, but anyway, so one thing I want to point out with looking at these two, because, you know, we get the larger legs, um, and then so we get the wider feet with this guy, but you know what? We don't get that with the Star Boost figure, but if you notice, so I think for Star Boost, wider feet would have gone a long, long way, making it overall aesthetic, because he just looks like he's got tiny feet. It's like the Bucky Cap situation all over again. Okay, and as a final side-by-side -side comparison, we have the Iron Man Mark 85, another MCU Iron Man figure, um, and the Bleeding Edge uh, Iron Man figure from the Iron Monger Wave, just so you can see a comic Iron Man um, next to the Star Boost one. Size-wise, they, they, for the most part, you know, work out. He's a little bit taller, but, you know, I think this one, he's a little narrow in the torso um, compared, so there you go. Okay, so my final thoughts on this figure. I'm very happy to have it. Um, uh, you know, I really like to get as many figures, characters, however, designs uh, based on certain things. You know, there's so many different versions in comics. It takes so long. But when you have something specific like the Avengers video game to be able to get more characters or more designs from the game, um, you know, it's a welcome addition to my collection. I just added, opened up one Detolf shelf space. Um, dedicated for my Game Reverse figures as well as my Marvel Select figures because I only have a handful of those. Um, so this one will be a nice addition to that shelf um, and it does look pretty good. 
Um, aside from that one paint issue right there where I'm missing some of that gray, overall it does look really good and I am pleased with it. You guys let me know down in the comments below what you think of it. Are you going to be picking it up? Do you already have it on pre-order? Does this lack of articulation in the shoulder make you not want to get it? Because look, again, that's its highest. I'm curious all in the comments below. If you guys like the video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching.